Okay guys, so you can see <coughs> that I have it cut out and I changed my wheel over to a grinding wheel rather than just a um, cutting wheel. When you're cutting with a grinder, the outside edges, if you, um, let me just show you this, the outside corners or radiuses, you just cut, you know, notches around and when you like overcut the metal a little bit, the inside ones are harder because you don't want to destroy any of the metal that you actually need. So you end up with a little more there than what you should have to have. Now when you cut this thing with a grinder, this sucker is as sharp as a razor blade on the edges. Okay? So I'm going to grind this off first to the shape I want. Basically, I've got the full width of the full thickness of the steel there. Now, like I say, this thing has sharp edges on it. Now, you can use the grinder. You can see that that'll take those edges off. What I like to do, though, which might seem a little slower, but I actually like doing this with a file. Because if I do it with a file, it slows me down a little bit. I'm not in a big hurry. And it gives me a chance to really look at the steel so I don't uh, skip anything. And I'm not beveling it as hard as I would if I was using the grinder. So I actually like using a file to do this. Um, I'm going to take this tape off of here. So what I did was, I, you had seen me in the other video, I made a pattern, I laid the pattern down, I marked it off with a felt tip, and then I put this tape down. The tape on the outside of the, on the inside of the line, because the tape helps me to stay in the line. The black grindstone on the black marker makes it hard to see the line, but the tape here makes it better. So anyway, it doesn't take much to get this thing shaped up here. You can see those burrs that are sticking on here. If you use the file, a little bit of an angle, it takes all those off of there. And that's how I like to end up with the metal. I want the full thickness there that I can get. Now, you know, any, you can do it any way you want. This is just how I like to do it. You had a grinder, I don't know if you can see that. It tends to take a lot more metal off than what the file does. And the more metal, the stronger it's going to be. Now, I just want, and I'm not welding anything on this edge. If I was welding it, it might be different because then I would want a little bit of a bevel to get good concentration of welding there. But I'm not really needing that. I just run my fingers over and if I feel something grabbing, then I'll file that again. Otherwise, as long as I don't cut myself on it, I don't care. i got enough cuts and bruises. Now, you don't want to leave this tape on too long. Like, if you leave it on overnight or whatever, it gets really hard to peel off and you end up with a bunch of little pieces that are worse than this. This is from grinding that I have these little pieces on here. So you don't want to leave it on overnight, this green stuff. 
really, like I say, it starts to come apart. So anyway, now that the tape's off of there, um, what I'm going to do, and you can see that tape left a mark on there, I want to wipe this off again so I can get tape to stick to it again. I, w I keep wanting to have like a fresh edge. I'm going to take a tape measure now, and I'm going to measure what's left, well, uh, that lip on the actual piece just to see uh, how wide that is because if it's a piece, if it's a three quarter inch piece then I can use the tape for that so yeah so the lip on the edge, that little flange is three quarters of an inch wide so what I'll do is I'll take and put tape on that. Now depending upon how come on depending upon how you're gonna bend this and stuff you gotta think to yourself you know how do I want to do this if I put the tape three quarters of an inch away and line that off that means I'm gonna be beating on the tape actually to get the bend so what I'm gonna do since the flange part there is three quarters of an inch. I'm basically going to um, tape this off. Wait, I'm making a mess of that. I'm basically going to tape the three quarters off in the mid, in the on the edge, so that when I hammer, I'm actually hammering on the steel on the inside of the tape. Now again, this isn't going to be perfect. It's just a little bit of a guideline for me to work with. I could also mark it with a magic marker it doesn't matter I just find that using tape I can see it better it reminds me of what I should be doing and again it slows me down a little bit so that I'm thinking about what I'm doing before I go beating on stuff okay so basically what I need to do is I need to put a bend and bend this up all around here so that's what I'm going to work on next so what I like to do, and I'm pretty sure you can see that, what I like to do, excuse me, is hold the metal with one glove, let me get a hammer here, a couple of hammers, I like to hold the metal with one glove and have an ungloved hand so that I can uh, work with that. <clears throat> so I want to bend this now you got to think to yourself okay which way am I bending this this is the passenger side it actually sits like this so these bends have to come up okay so you can do this a number of ways you can put the line right on the edge of that. You can hammer on the tape. Okay. Now I should have taped the opposite side. Or if you notice that I, when I cut this tree, I have like a lip in here. You can actually use that lip if you use a small, like a body hammer, to start giving you lines. Now I should have a line on there, but you can actually start hammering that, and you hammer that around. And keep hammering that and it will start to give you the shape there that you're looking for. Alright? So, since I have the tape on the side that I have it on, which is the bottom, and I want to tape, you know, take it upward, I'm just going to do it right here. What you don't, don't want to do is be in a hurry 
and try and bend one piece all the way to where it should be. Because what happens is if you do that, you're stretching the metal too much and then when you try and shape it any other way, you'll end up with a bulge in the steel. So you want to try to not do that. You see I've got a little bit of a bend going on there and that's all that I want to do for right now. What I'm doing, when I pull this away, I'm looking for the edge of the um, anvil, just so I know where to put my tape. Now this is 11 gauge. It might look pretty easy the way I'm doing this but it's really pretty tough stuff. But once you get the hang of where to hit it and how to hit it, now you can see it's starting to get that shape to it. And if you look at it and just think about where you're headed, it's going to have that rounded edge that's on the original piece. So all you got to do is just keep working that. Now you can come back to the beginning or you can, you know, stay where you were and just keep hammering it down. One thing nice about this heavy metal is it doesn't really stretch as much as the body panel. If you hit a body panel like 18 gauge or 20 gauge, if you hit that as hard as I'm hitting this, you'll have all kinds of stretches and kinks in the steel. And you'll end up having to go back and redo parts of it. Now, I don't know if you can see that, but uh, you can see that the panel's starting to get a little bit of a bend to it. That's because the metal's stretching on the edge, and it, ha and it has to go somewhere, so it's, you know, stre it's stretching this piece here. Now, some of it's, it's very hard to determine what we call shrinking and stretching. You know, there's only so many things you can do to metal. You can shrink it, you can stretch it, you can cut it, you can bend it. but what I'm doing here, I'm bending and I'm also stretching one direction, I'm shrinking in another. So that's the part that's hard for you to learn and I'm not really, you know, able to tell you exactly